In this video, we'll be discussing transform filters that repeat space in various ways. It builds on the topics introduced in the previous tutorials in the series, so I recommend starting with those. In the previous videos, we introduced transform filters that translate, scale, and rotate space. All of those types of transforms modify positions in a uniform manner. In other words, for each location in the original space, there is a single corresponding location in the transform space, even though it might be in a different location. But not all transform filters follow that rule. In sum, a single position in the original space may occur in multiple locations after the transform. Before we get into the details, let's set up an SDF that we can use. So we're starting with the standard render setup from previous videos with a renderer, a camera, and a light. Open the palette using the Alt-R shortcut and create a box frame SDF. Connect the box frame SDF to the renderer, then set the scale to 0.2, 0.7 and 0.6 and set the thickness to 0.05. Create a rotate and insert that between the box frame and the renderer. Then set the rotation to 0, negative 20, and negative 40. That will make things asymmetrical, which will help in the next section. We'll start with reflect. Create a reflect operator and insert that between the rotate and the renderer. The reflect operator uses a plane in space and takes everything on one side of the plane and flips it to the other side. We're currently flipping over the x-axis, taking the right side and mirroring it on the left. Oh, it can also flip along other axes or even along a custom axis. Going back to the idea of ROPS answering questions about points in space, let's walk through what this is doing. When the renderer asks the reflect what the closest surface to a point on the right side is, the reflect does nothing and just forwards the question along to its input, the rotate, and asked about that same position. And in this case, the result is you know, this point on the surface here. But when the renderer asked about a point on the left side, the reflect flips the x-axis and instead asks about a point on the right side again. The rotate gives the same response. So as far as the renderer is concerned, the same stuff exists on the right side as on the left. On the reflect, try adjusting the offset parameter, which moves space on both sides, either towards or away from the cut plane. And it also has a shift parameter, which moves the entire thing after applying the reflection. Create a modulo 1D and insert that in place of the reflect. The modulo 1D operator takes a slice of space along an axis and then tiles that same range of coordinates infinitely along the axis. Try increasing the size to increase the width of that slice and the spacing of the repetitions of it. When the renderer asks about any position within the original slice, it doesn't change anything and just forwards the question along to its input. But when it asks about any other position outside of that slice, it will map that position back into the original range. So as far as the renderer is concerned, whatever appears in the original shape also appears in 
the copies of that slice of space. If you fit a shape entirely within the slice, it will just repeat infinitely cleanly. But if the shape crosses one of the sides, the outside part gets cut off. And you can see that here on the side there. So there are two ways to deal with that. First, you could make sure that your entire shape fits within the slice area. Second, you can use mirroring. On the modulo 1D, set the mirror type to mirror. So this will flip every other copy of that slice of space. And that means that any point that's crossing a boundary, there is going to be another shape lining up exactly with that. So you kind of hide those error areas. In addition to modulo 1D, there are modulo 2D and 3D. So create a modulo 2D and insert that in place of the 1D. So we're going to decrease the signs here just to make that fit a little bit better. So you can see that it is now repeating along both the X and the Y axes. So it also has a setting that lets you choose different axes. Create a modulo 3D. And insert that. So this one now is repeating along all three axes. But when using Modulo 3D, since it's tiling along the z-axis as well, it can be easy to end up with the surface intersecting or covering the camera. So you'll need to be careful about positioning. Here, if we move the camera there, you can see how at some locations it crosses into the shape and then everything gets blocked out. So far, all of these filters have involved repetition along axes. But there are also similar operators that work more like a kaleidoscope. So create a modulo polar and insert that. Instead of taking slices along an axis, this operator takes a pie-shaped slice around an axis. So increase the first offset to 0 0.7 to spread the shapes out. So this is shifting that input space away from the axis. You can then try adjusting the second offset to move perpendicular to that first offset. When the renderer asks about a point in that original slice, it applies that offset and then just forwards the question along. But in the case of a point outside of that original slice, it gets reflected around that axis back into the original zone. Like the other modulo operators, modulo polar can have issues with shapes being cut off. Like the other operators, it has a mirror setting, which flips every other slice, which helps make sure they line up. Adjust the pre-rotate and notice how it's rotating space within the slice before applying the repetition. And if you adjust the rotate parameter, it rotates the entire thing after applying the repetition. Next, we're going to create a mirror quadrant operator and insert that. If we decrease the size there, we'll note how this is 
repeating space uh, across both the x and the y axes. If you apply rotate axis, you'll note that it is rotating space, but it's also applying mirroring. You can adjust the size parameter to shift space within each of the slices. Create a mirror octant and insert that. And then we're going to decrease the size to kind of pull everything in. Mirror octant is similar to mirror quadrant, but in addition to mirroring across the two axes, it also mirrors along the diagonals. So if you can adjust the size there to a shift space across um, both of the axes. And it also has this offset, which gets applied uh, before the diagonals, whereas the size gets applied after the diagonals. Uh, in the case of the mirror quadrant, those effectively end up doing the same thing, but they are both there uh, just for consistency with mirror octant. All of the filters that we've discussed so far in this video are relatively cheap in terms of performance. Each of them still asks their input a single question, just with different ways of modifying the position that they're asking about. But there are limitations to that approach. Create a reflect and insert that. So going back to the reflect operator, if you have a shape that's partially across the cut, you only end up with two versions of the same portion of the input shape. If you want to have two complete copies that include the whole of each shape, you can use the flip operator with the merge setting. Create a flip and insert that. Set the merge type to simple union. The merge options here are equivalent to the ones that were discussed in the combiners video. Now, when the renderer asks about a point in space, the flip operator will first ask its input just about that point, producing distance like that. Then it will also ask about a point that's been flipped, producing that result. Then it will combine those two answers. And in the case of simple union, it sees which one is closest and uses that. The benefit of this is that you get to use the entirety of both versions of the input. The downside is that everything upstream of the flip now gets run twice as often, doubling the performance cost. Create a radial clone, set the count to three, and then insert that. Radial clone is like flip with merging, but it arranges the copies rotated around an axis. Similar to flip, this multiplies the cost of everything upstream of it. And in this case, that means because we have a count of three, it triples that cost. But it does provide lots more flexibility to have multiple copies of the shape merged. And you can even use blending modes like Smooth Union to blend them together. That's it for this video. Stay tuned for the next video where we'll discuss even more types of filters. Check out my Patreon for access to scene files, exclusive tutorials, and more. Thanks for watching and make sure to like and subscribe.